getting the band back together, huh? <laughs> nice. Devil May Cry. Welcome to Master and Apprentice. Today we're making Devil Sword Dante from Devil May Cry 5. This is Marcus Laporte. For the last 17 years, Marcus has been working in the film industry as a production designer, art director, and prop fabricator. And this is Adam Ellis, a novice cosplayer and a systems administrator for Richard Teeth, the production company we work for. We're gonna show you what it takes to make professional level props from your favorite movies and video games. And teach you the tricks the pros use that you can do at home. This is Master and Apprentice. All right, Marcus, so we are making another giant sword, which is, of course, my favorite. It ticks all my boxes, right? It's just got, it's got fire, it's got light, it's got dragon claws, it's got high contrast metal finishes. This is a great sword. The materials and details for the blade were meant to be similar to those of Dante in his devil trigger form. It would open like a gate, with the idea being that the blade can't be completely contained from the inside. So one cool thing we learned from the design team was that it was inspired by two different concepts. The idea that the sword would have clones that would act on their own, and the idea that the sword would de-sheath like a fish being deboned. You know, we have stuff that we haven't really done before, so how are we gonna tackle sort of like the lava here in the center and you have that lighting on the edge and then you have a whole different beast which is these big dragon claws. We have a lot of hand sculpting we're going to have to do. We're gonna be making some silicone molds. Uh, the idea is that we're gonna have to backlight this and the only way to really do that is to do it with clear plastic. I mean, all this stuff looks really complex. Yes. So if you had to rate it on, on like the Marcus scale, what would you, where would uh, you put it? So I would say this, this build is hitting a nine easy. Uh, let me walk you through some steps here. Great. So we're gonna make a wood blade and we're gonna need a bandsaw a belt sander, an orbital sander, and a very large piece of maple. Next up is the center core. For this, we're gonna need some sculpting tools, water clay, silicone, clear resin, plywood, and styrene strips. For the lava sides, you're gonna use the same exact tools and materials as the center core. For the dragon claw guard, you'll need a 3D model, a 3D printer, and some sandpaper, along with filament to print it out, epoxy putty, super glue and baking soda for filling, silicone, and casting plastic. For the handle section, you need a 3D printer, a welder, a plasma cutter, a grinder, some mixing cups and buckets, and we're also gonna use some epoxy putty, super glue, baking soda, silicone, and some casting plastic. The pommel and jewel is similar to the guard, but you'll only need a 3D printer, some silicone, and clear casting resin. For the lighting, you're going to need a soldering iron and some wire strippers. The materials you're going to need are some LED lights, the wires themselves, solder, 18650 batteries, a buck converter chip, a low voltage charge chip, some flux rosin, and some heat shrink wrap. When it comes to assembly, you'll need some sculpting tools, some plexus to glue it all together, and some epoxy putty. So the final step is painting, paint brushes, paper towels, mixing cups. We're also gonna use some high particulate black paint, and some standard silver acrylic. We're also gonna need some white spray paint to do some of the base coat for the UV paint. If you don't have a 3D printer, you're just gonna have to hand sculpt it out of clay. It's a tough job, but it's doable. And if you don't have a plasma cutter, you can still use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Both of these will be less precise, but if you take your time and do your best, they should look pretty good. We've got our piece of maple. We have a pattern here, full-size print of the sword. The next few steps are gonna to be to take this over to the bandsaw. We are going to cut it out. We're gonna sand and prime it and get it ready for being the foundation for everything else. We're here, we're gonna do a Damascus steel sort of finish. The idea is that we have two different kinds of metallic paints, one sort of in the medium range, one's in a really dark range. Because you're using metallics and grays and neutral colors, it's gonna read like a Damascus steel as opposed to a wood grain. Gotcha. And I'm using some old brushes that are already sort of hardened and crunchy. If you use a clean brush, this is just gonna wash paint over the whole thing. This is gonna sort of darken the overall hue of everything that we have here. You do need to rest your hand a little bit. Use this as, as a way to stabilize what you're doing. Okay. That way when you lock your arm and you drag it over, it's gonna create a real straight line. Is that a little easier? Oh my God, so much easier. Okay, great. We got a significant amount of painting done. We got all the beveling done. This is more or less the structure and the basis for the whole rest of the sword. This is pretty much ready to accept everything else that we need to make. Great. Yeah. Time for clay sculpting. We're gonna sculpt some clay. We're gonna work on the center core section. We have a very specific size that we want the sculpted piece to be. So we are going to give us a guide. We are going to hammer in these rails. We're going to smear in some clay. We're gonna scrape it all off and then we're gonna sculpt the texture. We are gonna start some initial lines that sort of match kind of what's going on here. We scooped out all those little valleys. We smoothed over them with a paintbrush and some water. Now we're going to remove our rails. I have styrene. 
and then we're gonna fold this up and it's going to give us a perfect inch and a half tall vessel. You can mix some silicone and pour it on. All right, Marcus, so we have made our mold from the piece we sculpted. Yep. We repeated the process on the lava crust. We've done two sides of this, and here's one. Yep. And we have a mold of that with some clear orange plastic poured in. You got it. Yeah, the idea is that we want this to be optically clear so that the lights that we have behind it will show through. Right. It's a beautiful deep orange. It looks very tasty. It looks like candy. Love it. Okay, so we've just poured the centerpiece. This is still very wet, but going to dry. Yes. Uh, but our crust piece has been poured earlier, so it is mm -hmm. ready to be pulled it's out. It's ready right? to pull. So, you know, the sculpted surface, because it was matte finish, has kind of a dull uh, look to it on the outside. But if you flip it on the backside, you can see it's like really shiny and see-through. The light is going to transmit all through the back here, and it's gonna wanna stop at this matte surface on the top side. Yeah, this is looking good. All of our, our clear cast orange parts look great. I'm really happy with them. They've got really good light transmission sort of mm -hmm. qualities. Yeah, when you, you kind of see, see this at a side angle, you can really see how the light's gonna carry through. It's pretty cool. We're, We're gonna bit. do a classic sort of dry brush technique where highest detail is gonna take the paint and the lowest detail is not gonna have any paint on it. So when the light comes through, it's gonna hopefully read orange. And that's what's gonna give us our little like lava fingers. Yes. And All right. All right, Marcus. So we've spent a good amount of time working on the Dragon Claw Guard. We're lucky enough to have 3D models, which was great because we knew exactly the proportion and the size that these needed to be. We've glued them together. Glued them together like this, right? And that brings us up to this. So we had like cracks like this one there mm -hmm. that you showed me a little trick to finish. Yes. Coincidentally, baking soda is a catalyst for super glue. You can kind of fill small gaps and cracks with this come back and drip some of this on. It's going to soak in, it's gonna harden all at the same time, and it's gonna fill your crack. Uh, when something's being displayed on the computer screen, it doesn't need three-dimensionality at, at a scale this big, right? But right. we do, because it's huge. So whenever we printed these, there's very little actually there. It's like the shape and form is there, but none of the scales and the detail that we really need is on there. So what we've done is we've taken some epoxy putty, and we've sculpted on top of what was here. We're using a two-part epoxy putty. You pick even parts of this stuff out, you mix it together, real tiny. We just like rolled some of this in our fingers. Yeah. These would get applied onto here, right? And you can always come back and kind of smooth over, but you can see how that's kind of how we've gotten here. Yeah. This, this yeah. is one of those processes where I was like, wow, it looks so great. Now just do it 700 more times. <laughs> <laughs> but it's given us the detail that we really need and want. And at that point, we made a mold. And here is our giant beast. It's of a an really item. ugly mold. <laughs> so that's been pulled up out. Pull okay. the table? Yeah, I mean, the silicone. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Right, you want to hold the silicone? <laughs> All right, you're getting it. I know. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> okay. Right, here it is. This is a significant step. The only thing that's going to keep it from falling apart, I think. This is our handle steps. We started with a 3D printed section that we knew matched our other parts. Mm -hmm. We then made a box mold of this. We then took a solid metal rod that's about three quarters of an inch thick. We are going to insert this into the mold like this. The plastic's gonna backfill this entire negative space. Ready? It's already getting warm. Should be able to. Hey, look at that. There we go. All right. It's way. Probably ready to come out. Oh my God, this thing is heavy. And we also 3D printed and created a mold for the pommel and jewel section. So we poured the same clear casting resin that we used on the core and the lava sides to give the jewel that translucent light property. Marcus, this is looking amazing. 
electronics time, Mr. Marcus. We have a rig that we've made before that we're gonna kind of use as a guide for ourselves okay. to make another one. Do you wanna show me how to wire some of this up and solder? Sure, yeah. Uh, a lot of times people will come in and put just a tiny bit of solder on the pad itself. The pad's that little rectangular yep. uh, metallic sheen kind of finish thing. Um, so then at this point, we're just gonna kind of sit this on there, leave the tip on long enough for this to melt. Oh, cool. Here we go. There you go. I'm gonna give it some heat, push it around. Perfect. There you go, that's it. I've done the soldering. Now we'll just kind of repeat this process and connect all these other little pieces. Awesome. So here's our claw. We have excavated quite a bit of foam here. I think we've made enough room. The idea is that we need to kind of get everything packed into this negative space here. So the idea is basically everything besides our wires are gonna be in there in some capacity. Yes. Once we get all this uh, fit and arranged the way that we like it, we're gonna insert the whole thing into the heat shrink. We're gonna hit it with a heat gun and it should protect all of uh, our components. I feel like we're in a good place. Everything is pretty much assembled. All of our core pieces are together. We've got seam lines that are just not looking the way that they need to look. Right. So we have a negative space here along this ridge that needs to be backfilled. Mm -hmm. So we're using this epoxy putty. It's a two-part product that when mixed together acts a lot like clay, but it hardens like stone. We're using it to fill in all the gaps between our pieces. The good news is if you mess up, don't worry, you can smooth it out with some water. You just wanna make sure you do that before it dries. We are going to use this UV sensitive paint. Where we can't put light, we're gonna put fluorescent paint. So we're gonna start by base coating white, then we're gonna wipe it away. We're gonna spray some of this, wipe it away, and then it's gonna have kind of a fluorescent pop. So we're going to use a black and silver dry brush technique here, and then airbrush in the final details. Marcus, here it is, Devil Sword Dante. That's pretty great. It's amazing. <laughs> it looks really, really good. This is, this is the coolest thing I think we've made so far. The lava effect in both the center and the claws looks incredible. Yeah, the hand sculpting on this looks really good, and these look like they're as bright as the actual light source. I know. And that's rare. We weighed it, and it weighed over 33 pounds. Extremely heavy. <laughs> this this is not something you want to cosplay, for no. sure. I could barely hold it. Yeah, I have to hold it like a surfboard. I feel I feel like the game has so many cool props and weapons, and, and I'm just, I'm glad this is where we landed. Thank you so much, Capcom, for making this insane build possible. Check out Devil May Cry 5 out now. Click the link in the description for more information. And we'll see you next time with more cool builds. Getting the band back together, huh? <laughs> nice. Devil May Cry. And if you like this video, check out these two videos down here. And don't forget to like and subscribe.